You may be going through the most awful thing in your life, but I'm here to tell you that God is speaking to your dry bones today. Do we really go to Him and humble ourselves before Him and say, Lord, without you, I can do nothing. And He will never discourage you. He will always lift you up. This morning, I want to share with you the greatest story that's ever been told in all of history. But this is not an ordinary story. This is no fable. It's the true story of the birth of Jesus Christ. As I share this very special story with you this morning, I want to use the illustration of a candy cane. The candy cane has been around for centuries. The candy cane can be traced as far back as the 1400s. The candy cane started off as being just a straight, white, hard piece of candy. Over the years, a hook and stripes were added. It's one of the most popular Christmas candies ever made. The candy cane has much symbolism in it concerning Christ. My hope is that you will remember Jesus Christ and all he has done for you each and every time you look at a candy cane any time you eat a candy cane, and every time you hang one on your tree. How many of you have a candy cane at your house or on your tree this Christmas? The candy cane was a, started off as a plain white stick in the beginning. And this reminds us of the virgin birth. It stands for purity. So let's look in Luke chapter 1 this morning, starting with verse 26. This is where the angel Gabriel comes and visits Mary. It says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and she considered what greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear, bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord our God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there will be no end. Can you imagine what Mary went through that day? When the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You're going to carry my son. His name's going to be Jesus. I can't imagine it. The angel in his announcement to Mary reiterated the words of Isaiah the prophet. I'm sure Mary was familiar with the prophets of old and kept their promises in her heart about the coming Messiah. There were many prophecies about the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. Some received it and some rejected it. But they all studied the prophets and I'm sure Mary had studied the prophets and she held these scriptures in her heart that someday the Messiah would come. And here she is being told by an angel that she's the one that's been chosen to carry the Messiah. The prophecy said in Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, which we read 
first off this morning. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and the peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from this time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord will perform this. Wow. And then Mary, this is her response to the angel. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon, come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month of her who has been called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. And then Mary said, listen to what she says, Behold the servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed to her, from her. She said, let it be unto me according to your word. Do you know what that meant for Mary? According to the law, if she was found pregnant and not married, she could be stoned to death. She didn't question it. It's not recorded in the Bible that she was against it or that she questioned it. She just says, how can that be? And when they told her how it could be, she received it. That the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you and overshadow you. And he's going to make you pregnant with a baby. And this baby is going to be called the Son of God. And she just accepted it because it came from the Lord. The word of the Lord came to her. And she believed it and she received it, even in spite of what it could have meant for her. She could have been stoned. She could have been publicly ridiculed. Even Joseph was concerned about what he was going to do with her. Matthew 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph... Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make, a public, or make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took him, his wife, and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. The angel of the Lord said that you're going to name him Jesus because he's going to save the people from their sins. You know, when you look at a candy cane, if you look at the curved part, it looks like the letter J. The J represents Jesus. Jesus means literally Savior. Every time they called him, they spoke his destiny into him. Jesus, come and eat. Jesus, come wash your hands. It's time for dinner. Jesus, it's time to wake up. He grew up in a house just like you and me. He grew up with his mother and his stepfather, Joseph. And every time they said Jesus, they proclaimed the Savior of the world. The Savior of the world. So when we look at the candy cane, we see that it's shaped in the letter J, which stands for Jesus, the Savior of the world. 
When Jesus was made flesh, God condescended to us in bodily form, and that's why we call him Emmanuel, God with us. It says in 1 John 1, 4, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. And in Him was life and the light of men. Verse 14, it became flesh and dwelt flesh and dwelt among, and we beheld beheld glory, the glory of the glory of the begotten of the Father, full Father, full of, of grace and truth. He came as a man. If you will notice that there are three small stripes on the candy cane, this reminds me that Jesus came in the flesh. The red represents his humanity. The three stripes also reminds us that he is the third person of the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So Jesus came in the flesh. Even though Jesus came in the flesh, he lived a sinless life, which is also represented in the candy cane by the color of white. Just as it represents the virgin birth, it also represents his holy and pure life. Jesus lived a perfect life here on earth without one sin, without one stain, without one disobedience, without any sin. It says in Hebrews 4, 15, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. He fully identified with us in our humanity, yet without sin. He was the perfect propitiation, the perfect slain lamb who went to the cross. He fulfilled everything. Everything was fulfilled all in all in him. In Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 7, Mary and Joseph go to Bethlehem. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing, governing Syria. And all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were complete for her to deliver. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Micah, the, Micah prophesied that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem and he even used the symbology of a shepherd. Micah 5, 2 and 15. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrath, Though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. He was from before time. He has always been just like God has always been. Jesus didn't show up just one day in a manger. He has always been. He was the Word in His, his pre-incarnated state. He was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was from old, from everlasting. Therefore, He shall give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and this one shall be peace. 
If you turn the candy cane over with the hook at the top, it looks like a shepherd's hook. And the shepherd's hook reminds us that Jesus is the good shepherd. It says in John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd. And he did truly give his life for each and every one of us. It says in John 10, 14 through 16, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known and I know my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay my life down for the sheep. The other sheep which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. The prophecy, or excuse me, it says in John that there was going to be one flock and one shepherd. That he even desires those that are not in his flock. He desires you. If you are not part of the flock of Jesus Christ, he desires you. It was spoken thousands of years ago that he would want to have a relationship with you. It says, and the other sheep which I have not are not of this fold. Them also I will bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. He was speaking of you and me, and he was speaking of Israel, how he would reconcile Israel back to God. One flock, one shepherd. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod is something that would a shepherd would use to guide his sheep. And if the sheep began to, to get out of the fold or escape, he could use the crook or the, the hook in the shepherd's hook and he could pull them back in. And Jesus wants to pull us in. He wants to pull us back in to the fold. If you're wandering outside the fold, if you're out doing your own thing, he loves you and he wants to bring you in to the fold today. The shape of the candy cane and the shepherd's hook also reminds us of the angelic announcement that was made to the shepherds out in the fields that glorious night. Luke chapter 2 verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel of the Lord said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. When the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. 
Matthew chapter 2. The wise men come from the east. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. That was from Malachi 5, 2 and 5 that we just read. So they searched the scriptures to see exactly where Jesus would come from because Herod was not really interested in worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We know that he felt threatened. He felt very threatened by this new ruler that was going to come to power. And we know that Jesus didn't come to sit on an earthly throne and to be the, the ruler or Pharaoh or emperor of any city here on earth. He came to be the ruler in our hearts and in our lives. But Herod didn't know that. He didn't recognize that. He was very spiritually dull. And so they searched to find out where the child might be. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. And when they heard the king, they departed and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the child was. And they saw the star and they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The wise men brought three gifts which are represented in the hardness and the flavor of the candy cane. The peppermint represents the spices of frankincense and myrrh. And the gold represents the hard candy itself. The hard candy also represents the rock, Jesus Christ. It says in Psalm 61, 2 and 3, From the end of the earth I cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a, shelf, a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. The hardness of the candy also represents the promises of God. The promises of God are hard and true and sure. God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, he will do it. All of his promises in his word are yes and amen. And we can count on them. The flight into Egypt. And we know that Herod didn't have good plans for Jesus. We know that he didn't want to really go and worship Jesus. He wanted to kill him. He wanted to do away with him because he was afraid that he would overthrow him and take his throne. Matthew 2, starting with verse 12. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. And now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. 
When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed from Egypt, for Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. That's from Hosea 11. One, he was quoting from there. Every prophecy that was spoken about Jesus Christ was spoken 700 plus years ago. And every one of these prophecies have come to pass 100% to the T. There's not one thing that has not come to pass about his birth and the life of Jesus Christ. Everything that was prophesied about him has come to pass. The only thing that is yet to happen is the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you, he is coming. He is coming again. There is an appointed time and day and hour that he will come. And the trumpet's going to sound and he's going to descend and he's going to come back for his church. After Jesus was taken out of Bethlehem as directed by the angel of the Lord and taken into Egypt, King Herod commanded that all the baby boys, two years old and younger, be killed. Matthew 2, starting with verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all of its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined the, from the wise men. So they knew that he had to be at least two years old or younger. That's how long it, it took him to follow the star from the east. They knew about how old Jesus would be. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentations, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, children refusing to be comforted because they are no more. That was prophesied in Jeremiah 31, 15, and it happened exactly how it was prophesied. And all the baby boys, two years old and younger, were murdered. Because a king was afraid of losing his throne. But God was not going to allow that to happen. God has a perfect time. He had a perfect time. A perfect place in history where Jesus would die. And the devil wasn't going to do it sooner or later. It was going to be in God's perfect timing. Matthew 2, starting with verse 19. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, he took the young child and his mother, and he came to the land of Israel, but when he heard from Archelaus that he but when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod he was afraid to go there and being warned by God in a dream he turned aside into the region of Galilee and he came and he dwelt in the city of Nazareth that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets he shall be called a Nazarene and so he took him, and they left Egypt, and they went to Nazareth in Galilee. And that's where Jesus was raised. And it was prophesied that he was a Nazarene. And as you remember, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and when they all came to arrest him, they came and they said, Are you Jesus the Nazarene? And he said, Yes. I am. And when he said, I am, the Bible says that every one of them fell out at the sound of his name. They just went out in the spirit right there because he declared who he was. He was not the baby in the manger. He said, I am. 
Just as God said, I am that I am, when he spoke to Moses, when he told Moses to deliver them from Egypt, he said, I am. And so when he spoke that, he spoke who he was. I am. He spoke his destiny. I am. I will always be. I am who was and is and is to come. I am. There's just a couple of more symbols of the candy cane that I want to share with you this morning. Yes, the color red stands for Jesus' humanity. But not only that, it stands for his blood. The precious blood that would be shed for us on the cross. Jesus was literally born to die. He knew he had a mission on this earth. He knew that he was born to be the savior of this world and he was willing to do it. God's whole plan was to send Jesus to earth in human form to fully identify with humanity in the flesh and to die for our sins so that we could be reconciled to God. Johnny, can I ask you to come back to the keyboard this morning? It says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Because God loved, he gave. How many of you are, are giving gifts to your children today? You know, it's, it's, it's going to be so much fun. And later on tonight, we're going to open some gifts, and we're going to open some gifts on Christmas Day as well. But I can't wait to see the look on my grandchildren's faces. I can't wait to see the look on my, on my daughter's faces and my son when we get to go see him in January. You know, when they open their gifts, it's so, it just touches my heart. It truly is more blessed to give than to receive. It makes you feel so good inside that you could give something out of love. That's what the giving of the gifts is all about. It's just sharing the love of, that you have in your heart for your family, that love of Christ that's been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Because God loved, he gave. He gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to become, to be born in a stable, to be wrapped in swaddling clothes, lied in a, laid in a manger. He came just for you. He came to bear a cruel cross and to shed all of his blood for you so that you could be saved, so that you could have redemption, so that you could be reconciled back to God. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19, Now all these things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed us to the word of reconciliation. I love verse 19. It says, That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. God, who became flesh, Emmanuel, was reconciling us back to him. So the wide red stripe on the candy cane represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And the three thin red stripes not only represent the Trinity, but they represent the stripes that Jesus took on his back. It says in Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 2, 24 Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness by whose stripes 
you were healed. That's in the past tense, tense. By whose stripes you were healed. Jesus already paid the price for your healing spirit, soul, and body. I have one question for you today. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. I don't think there's any better day to give your life to Jesus Christ on Christmas Eve, the eve of the day that Christ was born, the day that we celebrate. So I'm going to come down here to the front, and I want to meet you down here, and I want to pray with you personally today to receive Jesus Christ. If there's anybody here, I want to invite you to come to the front. I want you to look at your neighbor on your left and your right. If you brought friends or family with you, ask them if they want to come and that you'll come with them so they don't have to come alone. God loves you so much that he came in the form of a baby and lived a pure, spotless, holy life so that he could reconcile us back to God. What's your name? Bridget. Bridget. Very nice to meet you, Bridget. Just stay here. Hi. What's your name? Sharon. Sharon. Very nice to meet you. heart. Amen. Anyone else that needs prayer this morning? You say, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Anyone else? I will wait for you. Today's the day of salvation. The Bible says for us not to harden our hearts. We don't know when we might get another opportunity. Today's the day, not another day. Jessica. My daughter's name's Jessica, too. Beautiful. Thank you for coming. Anyone else before we pray? I don't want to start the prayer without you. Is there anyone else you say, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ? Maybe you've known the Lord before. Maybe you've walked away from God. You're just kind of out there doing your own thing. But you want to say, I want to come back to God. I want to start over fresh today. Today is a great day to start over. It's never too late to have a start, a restart. It's never too late to turn around and come home. Is this your son? Yes. Hi there. Okay. Well, we're going to pray together. Let's just all hold hands here. Thank you, Lord. And you uh, just repeat after me, Father God, I recognize that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Wash me, Lord, with the blood of Jesus and forgive me of every sin in word, in thought, and in deed. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life and and take me to heaven when it's my day. Thank you for loving me and saving me In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And I just want to pray for each of you, okay? Father God, I just pray for Jessica right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for your your biggest and best blessing to rest upon her. I pray, Lord, that you heal her heart in the name of Jesus. I pray that you restore her spirit, soul, and body in Jesus' name. And Father, I also pray for Sharon, Father God. Lord, I pray for the, in the loss of her son. Father, I pray just healing in her heart, Lord. I pray for peace, Lord. Give her peace in this uh, Christmas season, Father. Lord, I just cover her in the blood of Jesus, and I raise up hedges of protection around her. 
I pray that you minister to her right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, just touch her heart. Touch her heart right now. Touch her Father God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. Tell me your name one more time. Bridget. Bridget, that's right. And Father, I pray for Bridget right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you just touch her, Lord, and minister to her. Father, I pray for healing in her emotions, Father. I pray for healing in her heart in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to cause what the devil has meant for evil and somehow you're going to turn it for good. For you are giving her beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I just break that spirit of heaviness off of you right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that is lifting in the name of Jesus, that peace is flowing over her and overwhelming her right now with your presence. In Jesus' name. And Father, I pray that you bless her son right now in the name of Jesus. That you let him sense your presence in an awesome and a mighty way. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Would you ladies like a, a Bible? Do you have a Bible? Would you like one? You're welcome. God bless you guys. God bless you. Well, if you would, would you stand with me this morning? Take a hand there next to you. I want to bless you. I just want to say Merry Christmas again to all of you. And it's so good to see you this morning. Right after service, my husband and I will be in the Guest Information Center. If you're visiting or maybe we've never met personally and you've been coming here for a while, please come by there and say hi. Uh, grab a cup of hot chocolate, get a piece of cake as you're going out the door. And um, let's say it with me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be great to you. May the Lord lift up his, up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.